What's up guys, LQ here. I am going to rank the six movies that have come out so far in phase four of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So let's start with number six, the worst movie of phase four. And by the way, let me say, I think phase four has been a mess. There's been some great movies in phase four, don't get me wrong. But if you look at the overall direction of phase four between the movies, the Disney Plus uh, shows, Phase 4 has been a mess. There's no clear direction. There's no clear plan. There's a lot of conflicting ideas that are happening. And I just feel like there's the direction that we had in phase phases 1, 2, and 3. That direction is gone. There is no direction now. They're just kind of... It's kind of like a, a shotgun method. They're putting all this stuff out there. Um, seeing what sticks and what doesn't stick. And it's not making for a very good phase. This is by far the weakest phase of the MCU. So let's talk about the six movies. Number six is The Eternals. Um, the Eternals, I thought, was an awful movie. Um, not just a bad MCU movie. I thought it was a bad movie. Um, it, If you took out a couple references, it felt completely entirely removed from the MCU. Just the aesthetics the style um, it didn't feel in any way a part of that universe but take away that I just thought that it was a poorly told story um, I thought that the the logistics of what the Eternals were, were going through in this movie I felt like it didn't make sense um, some of the character motivations didn't make any sense I, it was a bad movie the Eternals is number six and it's one of the few MCU movies that I would come out and say, yep, that was a bad movie. All right, number five is Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Now, I like this movie enough. Um, I, I definitely um, appreciate its um, artistic merit. Um, you know, the martial arts scenes were well filmed. The special effects were well done. Definitely represented the culture very well. And that, for me, was part of the problem because I never really got into Asian cinema. Um, I know there's a lot of great movies in Asian cinema, but for me, it just never really um, was something that I enjoyed. Even when I was growing up um, as a kid, you know, a lot of my friends were into, like, those kung fu movies. I, it just never really spoke to me. So I was probably always kind of... Um, in a disposition to not love Shang-Chi. And while I think it was a good enough movie and it was definitely well made, it just was a movie that wasn't for me. So that's number five. Number four is Black Widow. Black Widow was okay. It had a lot of problems, especially with the antagonist. Um, Taskmaster was a horrible antagonist. And then the main antagonist um, was a character that just wasn't really in the movie a lot. And when he was, he wasn't really all that interesting. It was a movie that came out about five or six years too late. It should have, it should have been a part of Phase 3. And one of the problems that I have with this, and it's the same problem that I have with Falcon and the Winter Soldier, is that su the supporting characters in this movie are more interesting than the main character. You know, I disliked Falcon and the Winter Soldier because Zemo and... Um, and U.S. Agent, they were more interesting than our main characters of Bucky and Sam. In this, you've got um, you've got uh, Florence Pugh's character. Um, gosh, why can't I think of her name off the top of my head? Well, her sister, <laughs> Black Widow's sister, is a much more interesting character than Black Widow is. And I really felt that this was a jumping board, a springboard for her character into the MCU. And it was more her movie than it was Black Widow's movie. So there's problems with it, but I definitely enjoyed Scarlett Johansson's performance. She always plays Black Widow well. Definitely enjoyed some of the action sequences. It got a little silly at the end, especially with the whole, you know, we're going to fall for the next 30 minutes and fight while we're falling and all that. So it got a little silly. But um, the scene where she beat herself up was a little comical. Oh, man, I might rank Shang-Chi above, Shang above this one. <laughs> no, I'm sticking with it. Black Widow's four. All right, number three, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, I like this movie. This is also a movie that really let me down. So it was good, and I enjoyed it, and I will watch it 
many more times. And, uh, you know, it, it's one that I will look forward to watching when I um, have my Marvel marathons. But, man, I had such high hopes for this movie, and it just dropped the ball in so many areas. It wasn't really the multiverse of madness. It was the couple universes of madness. Um, it just it just didn't feel... I don't know. I think that we all, in, in the fandom community, we built up this big expectation on what we thought this movie was going to be, and it wasn't that. Um, I think that a lot of us felt there would be universe hopping, there'd be a lot of cameos, there'd be a lot of just craziness happening, and it really, most of the movie took place in one universe um, outside of the main one. So... It was cool seeing the Illuminati. It was cool seeing, uh, you know, some of the, the cameos that, that we all, you know, were looking forward to. It just, there wasn't enough of it, and it just wasn't big enough. It was a very small movie in in terms of what it is in the MCU. And uh, I wanted it to be bigger. Now, um, Wanda was fantastic in this. And I was telling my wife before she went to see it, I said... This is kind of like WandaVision Part 2, and it really is. I think it's more more closely aligned with being WandaVision 2 than it is with being Doctor Strange 2. I know it's Doctor Strange's story, but it's Wanda's story too. And Wanda had the more interesting story in this movie. Um, Elizabeth Olsen was phenomenal, and uh, she just knocked it out of the park. So, good movie. It just also let me down. It's number three. Number two is Thor Love and Thunder. Um, fun, fun, fun movie. It was a little bit too silly for me. It, uh, Taika Waititi definitely leaned into the jokes. Um, he took what, what worked in Thor Ragnarok, and be clear, the jokes worked in Thor Ragnarok, right? Thor Ragnarok was, was a heavy movie, but it was also a very funny movie. Um, he took what worked in Thor Ragnarok, and he dialed it up to 11. Um, it was a very funny fun movie i heard some some reviewers say this and i i, I tend to agree it, it definitely felt a little bit more like a thor parody than a thor movie but at the end of the day i, I left the theater smiling i left the theater saying i had fun and that's why we go to the movies thor love and thunder is number two but number one i think it's number one for everybody right spider-man no way home they handled you know sony handled this movie so well with we're going to make a movie that is Tom Holland's Spider-Man movie, set firmly in the MCU, but we're also going to bring in these other characters, and we're going to dial up the nostalgia, but it's go still going to be Tom Holland's movie. And I just thought it worked. Everything about this worked. The brotherhood that these three Spider-Men formed, and the payoff that we got to some of these Spider-Men, especially Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, you know, we kind of dropped that series in the middle of his story. And we got some resolution to his story. Um, the scene where he caught uh, where he caught uh, uh, Mary Jane, MJ. The scene where he caught her. Um, it, I just I felt it right here, because that that was uh, vindication for him. In a lot of ways, that was the end of his story. So now there's rumors that Andrew Garfield is going to be back for more MCU, and I would welcome that. I think he's great. Um, but this tied up a lot of loose ends to the Amazing Spider-Man series. So Spider-Man No Way Home, phenomenal movie. One of my favorites in the entire MCU. It's number one. So how would you rank the six movies in Phase 4 so far? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your take on it. While you're down there, subscribe to my channel. And uh, I look forward to talking to you guys soon. I'll see you later.